So, Philippe Collin, therefore, who will uh, resume, in a way, uh, the proceedings from yesterday evening is one of the highlights of FTC, of this FTC3, that is the use of frozen science. So over to you, Philip, now. So good evening to all of you, good evening to all of, of us here, but also those following the event on the live streaming for on the conference site. So first of all, for those who were here yesterday, there might be some repeats here and there, but we'll be taking things from a slightly different angle. Um, we'll be assessing the demo from the use of addresses. We'll be talking more about addresses tonight than we did yesterday. So, what are today the various um, options, alternatives to publish on the internet? Briefly, today we, we have uh, websites, mobile apps, and then we'll be adding a new class of sites, which are the frozen sites, to publish contents. But also, these uh, sites are accessible with a new addressing system, which is called frozen addresses. So you are, of course, all aware of this. And uh, frozen sites should not be seen as a replacement of the existing tools today, but as an add-on, as a uh, something that comes on top. The characteristics of frozen sites makes them particularly useful in certain contexts, backgrounds, uh, applications, uh, but not maybe for all cases. Uh, therefore, uh, we see the use of the frozen address as an additional means of accessing uh, contents on the internet. The addresses, uh, we've uh, heard about this already, but this uh, let's uh, go through the, uh, this very uh, simple syntax with a network name, the asterisk, the star sign, and the site name itself. This is, um, uh, this is possible in English language, but in all uh, languages, whether written from left to right or right to left, so it's a really, truly international native system. Um, and for all languages, and uh, uh, Philip, while we're talking about addresses, we have people following us who are used to domain names, that is, addresses as they exist on the internet, and they all have an extension. The right-hand side part of the address, uh, uh, the suffix, you'd call this, and it's true with the frozen addresses, the uh, structure is simpler. You don't need to have or to know the extension. However, you have this notion of an address, a differentiated part on the left and the right hand side. Could, could you tell us more about this? We see on the Latin uh, letters, the uh, language on the net, left hand side, you have net work name, and on, on the right hand side, the site name. So, what is the difference? Well, Typically speaking, for those who are familiar with the structure of domain names on the internet, you could say that the network name is the main level, and the site name is uh, the secondary level, so primary and secondary level. So if you are a trademark holder, you will you know, file the name of your brand or tr tr trademark uh, as a network name, and then you will create as many states as, uh, uh, as, you, as you wish with the name of your brand, trademark, and then uh, star sign sites one, two, three, four, etc. So this is convenient in that in marketing, it, it, it's like um, brand extensions. You know, you take one brand like Stefan. We heard yesterday that uh, Stefan had uh, uh, registered his uh, uh, Stefan dot Paris uh, 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 name, so he could be using all site names for products that he is in charge of, uh, for the various languages that he would be uh, li uh, willing to work uh, with, if he was willing to use the network to build a social media, he could register different users. 
And later on tonight, we'll see uh, someone, Scott Smith, actually, who is in charge of a new service called Public Names that uh, are looking at the, the fragrance structure to um, develop a, a social media. So the network is your trademark, quote unquote, and the site name is the extension or the extensions of your brand. And every uh, site is independent. Uh, you can do, develop every site uh, separately from one another. Um, this is the address structure. The addresses can be of three different types. You have the public network, which starts with Frogan's Star. So this is the public network. This is how I call it. But in fact, it's uh, the site of Frogan's Networks because you can write Frogan's in all languages and all um, linguistic categories. So. Um, we have a fragrance in Hebrew, for instance, so that means different networks. Then you have the dedicated networks, the one we just spoke about, where also you have the star sign and your um, brand name. And uh, from 2016, you will have the intranet there's internal networks whereby an entity, an organization, a company may internally use the internet star sign uh, name for networks that are not accessible from the outside world. So now um, the price, six euros per year to register a site name and 1,500 euros to uh, register a network name. This is the price that the registrar will pay to the registry, that is, the administrators will pay to the um, FCR operator uh, uh, or the operator of the FCR. So, Philip, we're um, clear that we're still talking about uh, an operating basis that is uh, in line with what we know, the fundamentals of what we know today, the programs technology is wherever it is possible to use the, the existing uh, building blocks so to uh, facilitate access to the technology. This is what we see uh, in the way that the sites are developed with a system which is close to XTML. Uh, but for the addressing structure, we see that the distribution network is, although the names are different, is the same as that which we know for DNS. That is, there is one central register, the registry, the FCR, as you said, and you have partners, which are the FCR account administrators, which uh, allow you or me uh, uh, when I, I will have an FCR A, for instance. Well, in fact, in a nutshell, is, uh, the FCRA is the individual organizations whose activity is, is to uh, register addresses for third parties. So if you are the holder of a trademark, you will call on an FCRA. FCRA. There are already existing ones. Uh, Romuald will be telling you about this later on, which is the, the early FCRs. And via this um, person or entity which has access to the register, uh, registry, you uh, can register your address, whether it's a network address or a site address. Now, uh, let's move on to the demo. And... Um, one of the promises of the fragrance technology is to be able to develop a site once and for all so that it can be rolled out on all types of platforms afterwards. So we'll be showing five different um, uh, platforms, three desktop uh, platforms. The first is Windows. Um, then we'll have uh, Mac OS and Linux, and then two demos for mobile uh, platforms such as iOS and Android. The main uh, point to know here is that the 
fragrance player, which is the application used to display um, the sites, is a one that is available here, like your web browser would be available, or your video player, for instance. And this uh, application, the fragrance player, uh, is here opened. Uh, you see uh, that your fragrance player is present on your uh, desktop window. Um, it's a very uh, discreet um, yellow pad like this that can uh, be always visible. How do I get this uh, software? It can be downloaded from OB3FT on a free of charge basis. It's on your device. You will go to get dot fragrance. You go to get dot fragrance when it will be available, and you'll be able to download the software. That's the only way to browse on navigate on the fragrance site. Now, I do right click on this uh, little uh, pad here, and uh, to open an account, we'll use a prototype which would be the, the case of a restaurant in London called the Orange Ray. Uh, the manager, the owner of the restaurant, has called his uh, FCR account administrator to reserve, to book the uh, Orange Ray name as a site. Um, so this is a complete um, address there. Um, fragrance de Orange Ray. And the restaurant owner had um, a site developed for him, uh, uh, developed in uh, or described in uh, FSDL, uh, from site development uh, language, which is um, XML. It's a very simple uh, uh, language, easy to, to read and write, which describes the images, uh, the navigation process, uh, the buttons, the, the, the dimensions, the colors, and this window can be placed anywhere on the screen. And you will see that it's uh, below or behind the uh, programs player icon. And uh, when I said there were buttons, it means that you can actually click on this uh, site page to gain access to the slides that the slides uh, the in for the web they speak about pages here we speak of slides it's a set of graphics containing um, text or geographical um, uh, or geometrical shapes and vectors and so on and uh, buttons also that you can click on on this example you may click on four buttons the uh, lunch, uh, brunch, or dinner buttons, as the case may be. And you see the, the, the button, there are two parts. There's the, ge there's the graphics and the text. And buttons can have or take uh, rather complex shapes, actually. So we'll click on one of these buttons. And uh, there, again, you have a, an, an image and a text. So. Uh, this site uh, in design is quite conventional as uh, it is almost rectangular shaped, but we may uh, also be creative in terms of um, shapes or uh, translucency, for instance. Um, then back to the, this menu, you can navigate from one slide to another. A frozen site can have as many slides as you wish. The only limits will be space and weight. And a frozen site is very quick to download, even with rather poor bandwidth. So, from uh, on your mobile phone with an average, say, um, a c internet connection, even with this, the frozen site will be displayed very rapidly. Now we open up a new site. For instance, say we were talking about social media. We have another prototype here called Family. So the address, fragrance, uh, uh, star sign, uh, Family. And clicking on it, you will see that it's got a totally different look and feel. It's not rectangular shape. It is like transparent and has buttons that are not quite conventional. They're 
round shaped and they have each one a character in them. So here again the description of the Frogan site is so that um, the, the appearance is very different from one to another. If I click on Laura, favorite, Laura, so you can have a different type of slide here. You see that the slide is not the rectangle in containing uh, shape. The slide is the form, and the form is the slide. And you can actually magnify or reduce this um, uh, slide with a small button, control button, and you will see that uh, when the reduction factor is uh, higher than two, the slide takes a different format, which we uh, call the leap out. And it's a smaller format that can be uh, that will cover less space on the desktop. A little question, Philip, uh, and this is a totally um, off uh, the sleeve, you know. Um, uh, so when you reduce the size that you just did right now, how can you get access to the functions that are present uh, when your leap out is deactivated? Well, the small size of the leap out is not clickable, in fact. So when you um, change the size of the larger shape of the frozen site, you, can make, you may click on buttons. But if the reduction factor gets to a certain point like here, uh, you can't click. It doesn't mean that it cannot change. We have a system mechanism to refresh the aspect and contents of a slide, even in the compact um, format every other second. So, so but you cannot click uh, on the functionalities on the um, buttons. So if you want to get access to the buttons, you need to um, increase the size. So small practical application, for instance, to think of a frozen size. Uh, giving you um, the listings for the stock exchange, for instance. In the larger size, you will have all the volumes traded, uh, but also the uh, uh, fluctuations of the uh, currency rates. Uh, where in the small uh, version, you will have only the value of a currency at a given point in time, and that's all. Uh, and you have a maximum size for the sites? Well, these sites are uh, written into a um, rectangle of 320 to 240 pixels. So it's both, it gives you room for creation while remaining compact. I said that the um, Frogan's sites remain on top of the applications. So let's say, let's open a word processing application here. We're on in Windows here. So you'll see that. Uh, you can continue to work in your word processing software uh, application with, still with the uh, Frogan sites, like if you were doing parallel surfing, as we say. So when the uh, word processor is uh, being used, it's not on top of the Frogan sites, it's under or behind the Frogan site. And if you want to clean up your desktop and remove or hide away all the frozen sites that want uh, points, you just click on the, on the um, icon to get them to disappear, or a double click to get them back on screen. A third site that I wanted to show you will illustrate the notion of a network name that would not be Frogans, not the public uh, network. And I will take the fictitious uh, uh, example of a city of San Matthew in California, which will have registered by its FCRA uh, a site or network name called San Matthew, and will have published a site called City Hall. And this is one of the sites uh, on the San Matthew um, network, and in particular, this is a rather transparent site, which shows you various uh, departments and services offered by the municipality. This site is uh, built exactly in the same way as 
The sites published on the public network, Frogan's uh, Star Sign, with buttons, uh, browsing facilities, and, uh, and different slices, the others would. The only thing is, is accessible with an address that is a specific address, as uh, you see here on the right hand side. So, in other words, these are the so called dedicated addresses that you were telling us about earlier. Dedicated uh, Frovens uh, networks, whereas the others were published on the public Frovens network. And this also is still in Latin characters, but you could do the same in Cyrillic in Japanese and Chinese, Arabic, Hebrew, and other languages. It's maybe the right time now to change um, platforms and change uh, voices as well. Pour simplement montrer, uh, Just to show Afrogan's site, it looks the same when showed in a different platform. Here is the Frogans Player application on a Mac. Here is my favorite Mac. So where is it? There it is at the bottom. Here is the application. I can open it. And uh, very quickly, so as not to bore you, I can open up. Well, I surf and then I open up the same site. The first one was the Orangerie restaurant, Four Grand Star Orangerie, a public network with the same type of surfing. The button for the menu, the address, surfing. You'll note that the pictures are the same. The idea is that the rendering of the, of the graphics is done by a program. In C, that's the same for all platforms, so we can guarantee that the look of the site is exactly the same on the desktop and on mobile platforms, as we shall see later on. We can also open up the second one called The Family. Here we go. Once again, just to show you, now the overlap uh, of the sites and how the levels of transparency is handled. It's identical on Mac OS, like on Windows. I can reduce the size. I can click on lower to see the slide for her. I can look at her agenda. So it's a third different type of slide. So this is the leap out for this slide. And I can leave it on my desktop while I'm working on a word processor. All of these functions, of course, they're programmed. These are examples, right? Demos made in-house. But tell me, once the technology is deployed, the developers will be able to let their imagination go free and exploit all these functions, right? Absolutely. Like any respectful programming language, you'll have a list of functions with the settings for all functions. The development environment is very well known. The concepts are similar to Photoshop, for example. In a slide, you have different layers, and each layer is a combination of geometric elements. And you can combine the layers by adding them up, subtracting them, by changing their color or intensity. So it's, it's easy to understand. And the syntax in the file is an Excel syntax. So very, very much a classic. So big, small. And now let's move on to the third platform, Linux. About the various operating systems, the initial release of Furgan's player, you had Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and for the mobile part, we had iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Of course, the Furgan's project is built on the idea that the site should be displayable by any connected screen. 
In the future, the Forgan sprayer may be available, for example, on connected watches. It may be on smart TVs, connected televisions, or connected objects that have not yet been invented. I'd love to see it in an iPhone, Philip. Hey, listen, if you are patient, you'll get it in a few minutes. <laughs> Let me just uh, open up here in Linux another site using Fergan's player in the middle. We'll open up a site that was published on the Fergan's public network called Fergan's Star Luna Model. Yes, the lunar module. What's great about this site is to show you the diversity of how you can program a button. This character here, there are about 12 buttons here on the screen in red. And while we're here, well, we have a button that's in two parts on both parts of the module. My laser point isn't working very well, but anyway, this means that you can click on one side or the other to get to the next slide. That's important because sometimes you don't dare make buttons with original shapes, but it's possible with FSDL, and we shall see that it does not reduce your browsing capabilities on mobile phones. Here's the address, as a matter of fact. And let's move on to the iOS platform to show you exactly this same site on Stefan's iPhone. I love it. Thank you. But while we wait, Tom McKenzie, who's in the room, are there in the comments on Twitter, maybe? In that case, Tom, please let us know so that we can try to answer those questions live, depending on the question. So, Tom, don't hesitate if you'd like to pass on any information to us, any questions. After the demonstration, Philip, we'll open up to a Q&A session. OK, let's change screens. On your, you were thinking of the lunar model. That's what you saw. Here's the same thing on an iPhone. Just a few seconds more. Here it goes. And let me tell you that all of these, we're not cheating, these computers, they're all right up here on stage. And we'll now open up with a player on an iPhone, an application that you will find on the App Store. There are two buttons, About and Menu. On the left hand side, the menu button allows you to enter the address for the public network for Gans Star Lunar Module. And you can see that it's exactly the same site as the one we opened up on Linux just a while ago. Exactly the same down to the pixel. It was not adapted. No adjustments. So the lower section here of this player on iOS is called the navigation pad, which can be used to look at the various buttons to clear on this slide from left to right. And you can see the red section is the active part of the button for the various buttons. And if you move towards the left, you can select a button without touching it with your finger so your visual field is not blocked by your finger on screen. You're not forced to think about, did I put my finger here or there? You keep your finger on the pad, and you browse until you select the button. And to activate it, just click on the navigation pad. You agree that? This site was developed one time in what I would call an almost an emancipation 
of web users because now it's possible without great resources, without having a lot of time to devote to it, to develop once and to publish on different platforms, on all the platforms he showed us tonight. Absolutely. If I take the example, for example, of that restaurant, the idea is this. I develop a site by writing the code once. Typically, it takes two hours between design and putting together the graphics. And then, <laughs> absolutely no adjustments to make for it to be available for all platforms, exactly the same code on all the platforms, on all the five platforms I just showed you. Exactly the same graphic files, the same formats, no conversions, no need to go to the App Store or to call in your cousin who's an expert with Android to make sure that it works. You did not have to call upon the god Apple. It all works on its own, just the way you designed it originally. Here we see two functions, two features. First of all, you can change the size of a site and change it. And you can move your hand and navigate from one site to another between the various sites opened on this device at that point in time. We can also come back to the mosaic mode by clicking. Here are the various sites open now. You could have a full page. Thank you, Philip. We're coming to the end of the time allotted for this demo. But I would like to be sure that we have a little bit of time for any questions. So stay with us. If there are any questions in the room, there's a roving mic. So just raise your hands and ask your questions. In the, in the meantime, just the last platform, maybe. And you can ask your questions in the meantime. So the last platform is Android. You saw the site several times. The player has the same features. So you don't have to learn once again how the player works. They have the same buttons, the same menus, the same navigation pad. And when I click, when I enter the same address, I get to the same site, quite simply. The family site, for example, here. Here it goes. And exactly the same user experience, the same browsing on this Android phone as well. OK. Are there any questions in the room or on Twitter? Yes. I have a question. I'm Benjamin Trister. I saw that you're entering the address on an iPhone or on an Android phone. It may be a bit slow to have to enter the entire address, Forgan, Star, and then the name. Is there a faster way of entering an address, if you know it? Well, in this release of the prototype of Forgan's player, there's no easy way. We will just implement a button that will enter the star directly in the interface. So you won't have to drill through the menu to look for the asterisk between the letters, the figures, the signs. What you must understand is this. There will be just as many for against network names as names available potentially. So there's no special reason to reserve names or to enter a, a specific network name versus others. You can enter four guns, click on the small button of the star, followed by the name of your site or your network's name. You click on the star button and then the site name. Philip, we have a question from Twitter. Does the player work? Well, on mobile devices in landscape mode, and if so, where does the pad go? Well, yes, the player will work in landscape mode, will, I said. It's not available on this prototype. 
but in the next release, we will be able to turn around your mobile device, in which case the pad, well, it was horizontal and will now be on the side vertically, quite simply to optimize the available space. So just imagine your iPhone, you turn it on the side, the pad goes to the right-hand side, and you can continue navigating with the buttons by using your finger top to bottom, bottom up, instead of left, right, right, left. I think we have another question. I'd like to know if for the addresses, it had to be, can you use dashes? No, dashes are separators that are accepted in Frogan's addresses. On the left-hand side, in the network name, on the right-hand side, in the site name. There are rules whereby we set rules for how distinctive signs are used, non-letters, so that we can register a site name or network name. I think we'll be talking about that a bit later on tonight. But dashes are accepted. You can even have several dashes so that you can have longer names. And you can use figures, too, absolutely. Thank you, Philip. One last question. I thought there's a question in front, and then we'll have to stop there. Even though the demo was so exciting that clearly you want to talk about it for you ever. Tell me, with can you make links from Frogan's addresses to Frogan's sites? Can you create links like email or a web page so as not to have to always enter the Frogan's address? Let's say a web page where you can have a link. A good question. You can open up a Frogan site directly in the player from a single link. A bit like Let's say on a PDF. You know it well. You have a link to a document, a PDF document. If your PDF reader is not open on your desktop or your mobile device, the application opens up and the document opens up inside. For Frogans, the player will open up, and inside the player, the site that you called up will open up. And this allows me to tell you it works the other way around. In a Frogan site, you can have links to websites, links to email addresses. It will open up the client email. So it's an integrated part of the communication system on your device. Thank you, Philip, for a rapid overview necessarily. Sorry to have been forced to be so brief. But the potential of this technology is there, and it has been demonstrated, I believe. There's another question on Twitter. Is there a search engine available for this technology? Well, I let me tell you, too, that this is the aim of this conference, and this is what Open3FT is doing, creating an environment a development environment, but not necessarily to create the applications that will help to exploit that. So the search engines, well, we think, of course, that there will be uh, search engines very quickly around Frogans, but it is not included in what OP3FT will be delivering, because our job is to deliver the technology, to give the tools, give you the tools so that you can then create all these applications. Is that it? Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Philip. A round of applause. Two demos in two evenings. Man. And wonderful demos showing us once again the full potential of the Frogan's technology. My mouth is watering, Jean Emmanuel. Oh, yeah, that's the list. No, I love the duck. I saw that restaurant, Laurent Juret. It looked like a wonderful piece of duck. <laughs>